That's why um, we have selected your book uh, to be part of our learning uh, story as, as educators in Canada, but also makes me wonder um, because we don't have this culture in Canada, you know, to, to um, we still use observation as, as uh, tools to assess students. So we're trying to introduce learning stories. And, and how do we teach students, uh, in other words? You know, what are the key components of a learning story? Because when we look at in what you have in the book, um, there seem to be similar elements in the stories that um, are presented as, um, as examples in the book. So I'm just wondering if you can elaborate a little bit on, on the key components of a learning story mm -hmm. without being a formula, uh, mm -hmm. that's very clear, but mm -hmm. what, what would one include in a, in a learning story? Well, the learning story format has slightly changed. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the reality is it's a very dynamic process. As teachers engage, they make it their own, and so it begins to shift and change. In the first instance, we had just the narrative, mm -hmm. then short-term review, we called it, which mm -hmm. was the analysis of the learning, and then what next, which was the planning. Yeah. Now. It's a really interesting thing because we look back now and we think, oh, what were we thinking? Actually, it was that accessible because one of the things about assessment that was critical to us was to make sure in developing a process and practice of assessment, we needed to make sure that this assessment was accessible to children and accessible to families. It made sense to children, made sense to teachers and made sense to families. And we realised that short-term review, this doesn't this mm -hmm. doesn't connect. But when we start saying, oh, well, what is this about what learning is happening here? What did I learn about Mark today? Uh, teacher's reflection even. Mm -hmm. Once we started putting that frame, because actually the learning story doesn't become a learning story until you do the analysis. The analysis. So the, the narrative, I mean, there's plenty of description out there. Teachers had been long been doing description of mm -hmm. children's mm -hmm. learning. But there was no, it was the analysis that took this into the field of assessment mm -hmm. and made visible to the community at large what was valued in this place. So that was, that was a, a tremendous shift actually in connecting with families. And the third part was of course the what next. And we realised too that as we engaged with our accountability agencies, we realised we had closed down the notion of planning rather than the recognition you know, that children are like a moving target. <laughs> and it, you can't continue to be responsive if one day you write a learning story and you put what next and you list things if you immediately dive into that the next day without actually negotiating with the child, yeah. responding to the mm -hmm. child. So it, it changed, that, that changed to opportunities and possibilities. Yes, let's think about the possibilities, but actually, if we're going to be truly responsive to this child, we need now to think beyond that, opportunities and possibilities. And, and some of the things we're using now are statements like, how might we stretch this learning further? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's one of the, you know, people talk about planning, and in the past, the planning has been very separated from the assessment the practice. Assessment. Mm -hmm. And actually, if I think back to our assessment practice, pre Tafariki and pre-learning stories, it was often, uh, well, it was very developmental. Mm -hmm. And it was very deficit-based, and it was often hidden in the offices. That was the good news. <laughs> <laughs> Locked away for no one to see and no one to engage with. Yeah. Um, that was just a fortunate thing that happened. <laughs> but you'd have the assessment over here, and then you'd sit around a table and talk about planning. <laughs> Actually, yeah. and these two wouldn't intersect. Not, yeah. And so once the sort of assessment was directly linked to the planning with this notion of, well, what are the possibilities now? Mm -hmm. How might we respond? And actually, one of the ideas and how this evolved, and as part one of the projects following um, the the actual project to look at how how might assessment look, the government was involved in developing a very big project for primary schools around assessment exemplars. And uh, Anyway, they had well started the project, hundreds were involved, and they suddenly noticed one day who was not at the table. 
early childhood. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but fortunately, they said, okay, they came to Margaret and myself and said, we'd like you to do a pilot, a small pilot, mm -hmm. on exemplars for early childhood. And that turned into a nine-year project. And actually, that became a very significant project in terms of the support for development of, of learning stories mm -hmm. and how might this assessment look over time. And we really began to think deeply about the planning. Uh, because for a long, I mean many years, how long in education have we been talking about personalised learning? Many. Uh, <laughs> many. <laughs> many. And, yeah. and often we've never met the mark, actually. Mm. And so I would say to a teacher, look, when they say they're doing planning and they've got something sitting on the wall, it's often, they often actually, when you, you actually get down to it and say, did this happen? They will acknowledge that it happened. Well, they, yes, they do acknowledge that. No, it didn't happen. So then you say, well, actually, inside your learning story is the planning. This mm. is not the only planning, but this is the personalised planning. Mm. This is where you'll see the trajectory of the child's learning over time in this portfolio. You'll draw the threads together over time of that child's interest, that passion, um, which will be pursued and supported by teachers. I now want to give you an example of a learning story using the three parts I have already talked about. The first part, the noticing. This is the section that is the story and includes the photographs. The second part, the recognising. This is the section that provides the analysis of the learning. It is at this point that the story becomes a learning story. This is the actual assessment. For example, what learning I think is happening here or what did I learn about Elizabeth today? The third part, the responding. This is the individual planning for the child. What will we do to strengthen, support and extend the learning? Or alternatively, we might use opportunities and possibilities as a heading. What follows is an example of a learning story. This learning story is published in the book Learning Stories Constructing Learner Identities in Early Education by Margaret Carr and myself and was published in 2012. It is a learning story about a child's agency. Jackie Lees is the author of this learning story and teaches at Pakaranga Baptist Kindergarten in Auckland, New Zealand. She is a passionate and enthusiastic advocate for children. Her own philosophy includes being present and really listening to what children are saying. She says that she is learning about children all the time and she believes it only happens if we listen deeply to children. It is this focus on children that keeps her enthusiastic and engaged, always open to living with uncertainty in order to be responsive to children. This is what the learning story looks like in the child's portfolio. The learning story takes three pages in the child's portfolio. The photos tell the story. The story is called Building a Sticky Bridge and the first page is entirely of photographs. The second page is more photographs with a written story. The story is very short but clearly describes the story when read alongside the photographs. The third page includes the assessment of the learning. What might Elizabeth be learning in this story? Also, opportunities and possibilities for the future. For the purposes of this discussion, I have included the learning story written out again in a form that you will find easier to follow with this digital format. Building a Sticky Bridge Today, you and Elizabeth were very busy working in the collage area. You had a great idea of making a bridge with sellotape and were working with tremendous concentration to put this plan into action. Your bridge began to look like one of the pictures I had seen in my new bridge book, so I brought it to show you. You guys are great engineers. What might Elizabeth be learning in this story? You and Lucy work together so well 
Elizabeth. I'm really impressed by the way you share ideas with each other and negotiate. You are also a respectful and generous friend. You were very quick to tell everyone that the bridge had been Lucy's idea in the first place. Did you realise that you worked together for two and a half hours making this bridge? You have an amazing ability to focus and concentrate on your projects. When you came to talk to me about how you were working together, you asked what it was called in our wall display. I said it was called collaboration. So you went back to tell Lucy that you were collaborating with her. You really like words, don't you? I'll tell you a secret. I love words too. Opportunities and possibilities. The challenges you set yourselves are just so much bigger than I could set. I think I will just have to wait and watch and get ready to be impressed by your next fantastic creative idea. Uh, is being worked to see what has been worked on. Parents' response. Mum told me that when you brought the story home, Grandad was visiting your house. He was a bit worried that using six rolls of sellotape to build a bridge was a bit of a waste of sellotape. But Mum said that you told him that Jackie didn't call it wasting when you were collaborating and being creative. Your mum was really impressed that you were able to use those words and defend your use of building materials. So am I. Jackie went on to write a reflection about this learning story. This reflection was written some time after the original story was produced. This is the reflection. The sticky bridge was a significant piece of documentation for me because it enabled me to see very clearly the power of making children's learning visible for both them and their families. This story helped both Elizabeth's grandfather and mother to see her in a powerful new way, both as a learner and also as a person who was able to defend her choices and say why they were valid and important. This story became a real connection between us, and even though she's moved on to school quite some time ago, her family still bring her back to visit, and she always talks about the Sticky Bridge story. I am looking forward to sharing a little more inf information in my next conversation that will focus on this quote, A child's culture cannot enter a classroom before it first enters a teacher's conscience. Thank you for listening.